the committee to elect Mark Whitaker Sheriff of Dart County. And this is another one of our videos that we've been doing. So you get to know Sheriff Whitaker a little bit better. And you've come up with some bullet points and we've hit a couple of those bullet points. But another one that you have and kind of makes my, people might wonder, how are you gonna do this as sheriff? And it's building stronger communities. Uh, you have your hands in a lot of areas that people don't realize that the sheriff's department is in. And, and a lot of that goes to building those strong communities. Let's, let's talk about that. How are you engaging the community? How are you getting out there and, and building up, whether it's Pittsburgh or whether it's Ansonia or Rossburg, how are you building those communities to make them stronger? Okay, so I think it's important for a sheriff to understand and be a leader in building stronger communities. And the way a sheriff can do that, and law enforcement in general, is to be good citizens and engage with the community. And the way you do that is you engage with local business organizations, citizen groups, uh, school superintendents. Uh, schools are so important right now. It's, it's where everything starts. It's where our next generation is starting. And I think it's important if a sheriff wants to make his community or his county safe, uh, we want a lower crime rate. Uh, we want to make sure that if, we're, if we have this drug problem in the community, that we're leading the way on finding ways to, to, to resolve those issues and, and at least lower those issues. And the way we do that is through teamwork because a sheriff uh, and a community can't do it by themselves. And many, many years ago, I kind of noticed that some of our organizations and groups were working in silos. Uh, so they say, you know, they're working in, they're kind of, you know, medical was over here doing their thing, mental health was over here doing their thing, and, and, and things like that. And I think it's really important that a sheriff engages with mental health, with your medical group, with your schools, and that we're bringing together and we're sitting down together and we're having conversations and we're not working in our individual areas or on our individual goals. And I think that's extremely important. So how do we build stronger communities? Uh, one way is I like to start at the most basic level and that's with our youth. I've always been uh, or always said that if I was given, for example, a million dollars and I could do anything I want with it to improve the community, what, but I could only pick one thing or one item, what would I do? And I would take that and, and spend it on our youth. I would spend it on uh, scientifically proven uh, educational processes um, that help students start to identify early on making healthy choices, for mm -hmm. example. And I think part of that, that's part of that deal. So as a sheriff, I support school resource officers. Mm -hmm working with professional educators that are trained and that's their expertise working with superintendents i believe school resource officers bring a lot to the table they bring uh, interaction with the students it builds trust between the students and law enforcement uh, it also allows for security of the school you have a secure uh, security aspect of that and that's important. They're there to protect the school, but they're not there just to stand or sit at a desk waiting for something that may or may not happen. Uh, that officer should, that deputy, he or she should be up moving around through the school, interacting with school staff, interacting with the students, and taking opportunities to educate, learn, and earn trust. And that needs to be done in a professional manner, and I support sending our school resource officers to training that helps work with them and working with superintendents. And that is one way that we build stronger communities at that very most basic level. I also want to see our school resource officers working with the parents. It's a team work. We're not there. The people that know best about their kids are the parents or their caregivers or whoever their uh, uh, parental uh, people are. You know, sometimes it's grandparents but working with them. And I believe that parents should find the school resource officer or a Dark County deputy an approachable person that they can come up to and talk to and discuss things with, especially if it's concerning their kids. Because I tell you what, if we wanna make an impact in the future on, and I'll tell you right now, the drug problem is, is we have to educate our kids that there are healthier choices to make not just whether it's drug use, it's not just a say no program, it's making overall healthy choices. Because I feel if our youth and our students will choose to make healthier decisions in how they live, how they eat, exercising, how they live 
morally, ethically, all these different things, that when the time or an opportunity exists for them to make a negative decision, hopefully they'll make the right decision mm -hmm. and not choose a different direction. And I think if we can lay the groundwork and we can change the way the next generation thinks when it comes to that, I think we can be a lot better and, off. And really, this is probably a better version of what the D.A.R.E. program was because you're hitting more angles as with the school resource officers yes. than you were. I mean, and, and, and let's face it, Mike Burns and, and Don Drew and mm -hmm. all those others that were part of that, they built up those good relationships when they, they were younger, when students were younger. But this is really getting students really at a lot of different levels. Yes, from the earliest levels right. all the way to the, to, to, to the senior year. So absolutely, nothing against the D.A.R.E. Pro program. The D.A.R.E. program is still out there. We choose not to do the D.A.R.E. program alone. The D.A.R.E. program is somewhat uh, uh, more strictly focused. So our school resource officers attend programs and trainings and, and uh, items like that so that they have broader capabilities to uh, educate youth. Say, for example, uh, texting while driving. That's not part of the D.A.R.E. program uh, necessarily. But uh, we want a larger, we want to uh, cover a larger area than just mm -hmm. drug abuse resistance education. Um, we want to do more things. We want to talk about, uh, you know, whether it's safety in the home. Uh, there's just a number of things. Texting. Um, and we'll just say sexting, uh, teaching mm -hmm. them that, that we live in a world of social media. Once it goes out, you can't take it back. Right. And we want them to be responsible when they make those decisions. And I think that, that that's kind of part of some of the subject matter. So definitely working with schools and working with the youth is extremely important in building stronger communities. You mentioned that you work with, uh, that you engage with businesses and citizens groups. Yeah. Explain that a little bit more. How, how do you work with them or how do you engage them and what are you looking for? Well, when I connected with the, I was a board member on the uh, Chamber of Commerce when becoming sheriff. Um, I left that position, but when I left, uh, I was still connected and still have the relationships that I built as a chamber board member. Mm -hmm. And it was so important because when I am there and, and will continue to be available to them and attend their meetings, and I do attend chamber events because that gives me the opportunity for all the different business, whether it's a manufacturing, whether it's retail business, grocery business, whatever it is, I want business folks to feel the freedom or the ability to, that I'm approachable. They can come up to me and these events, if I'm there present at those events, it's really easy for them to walk right up to me and say, hey Mark, I wanna tell you about something that happened or hey, uh, what's going on over here? And I also understand the business's perspective and what they expect out of their local law enforcement and their mm -hmm. sheriff's office. And I think that's extremely important. And that's where that interaction happens. And that's how I learn how to do our job better. And that goes back to the transparency that you're trying to build in the sheriff's department, or already have to a lot of degree, but trying to keep in, in the sheriff's department. Absolutely. So communicating with citizens of groups. Uh, we do have things investigatively, and there are records that uh, are, are, are not public record that we, we're not allowed. But as a rule, uh, I feel it's extremely important for a sheriff's office to be transparent. And that transparency is uh, extremely important to the citizens because we serve them. We serve the citizens, the visitors, and the people that come to Dark County. And the best way to be transparent, and I'm trying to do a better job with the use of uh, our Sheriff's Office social media. Mm -hmm. um, we have just upgraded and updated our website. If anybody has a chance, they should go to that and take a look at that. Uh, but what I wanna do, and I'm working with technologically how we can pull it off, but one of my goals in, uh, is to provide uh, the Sheriff's Office data to the citizens, uh, links or uh, pages on our website where you can see how many, uh, for example, how many traffic crashes have we investigated this last month? Uh, how many citations, how many warnings did the deputies give out? Mm -hmm. um, what criminal cases are we working? Um, you know, if, if there's anything significant going on, making sure that we're putting out news releases so the public knows through media releases, uh, also through social media, uh, letting folks know, hey, here's what's going on at your sheriff's office. And you've done that in the past, I know I would get a, a, a yearly report, but you want to keep that 
going, I mean, I mean as far as updating yes. it regularly. I want to continue with our yearly report. This is a discussion that we've had with my administrative staff, but more importantly, I want to put the yearly report online so it's available for citizens to see, so that they can read that report and it's easily accessible. Um, and I'm working on that process, working on how to gather all that data, put it in a format that we can get it online rather than just necessarily maybe a PDF document that we print off mm -hmm. uh, and, and something that we would update on a regular basis. And, and that just seems like the next step since you have a lot of other links like the, the GL roster yes. or the sex offender registration kind of thing. Uh, that, that seems like a, a a common sense approach as far as what would be next for, for the citizens to go look at and see. Uh, anything else you want to talk about? We've talked about a, a lot of different things. Any, anything else that you want to hit on or, or, or talk about before we, we end this video? I guess the last thing I would say and, and, and I want to address because I, I hear it, the mayors of the villages of our um, county have expressed concern. Um, our Sheriff's Patrol, also known as the Sheriff's Auxiliary, mm -hmm. um, which is a voluntary unit, has uh, unfortunately, because of the nature of volunteerism and the nature of law enforcement work, has complete, has dwindled significantly. And a couple of years ago, the Sheriff's Patrol was unable to, uh, they were not staffed enough to uh, provide law enforcement services or to enter into contracts with some of the local villages to provide, whether it's a couple of hours of patrol here and there. And uh, the mayors have expressed to me, what are we gonna do about this? Uh, how can we enter into uh, smaller, shorter contracts with the Sheriff's Office to, to provide some sort of guaranteed patrol for our village? And uh, right now, me and Chief Deputy Randy Lankus are working uh, very hard at putting together some numbers and coming up with what I think will be palatable numbers that these mayors and uh, villages might want to consider where I can offer full-time deputies or part-time deputies as a contractual agreement so that we can get them back in the villages uh, for a few hours. Um, and that is one of my goals that I'm working on right now and one of the goals that I'm really looking towards uh, as we move ahead over the next six to eight months I'd like to implement to make sure we get deputies available if they want to enter into those contracts like we used to. And again, that makes the department more visible. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. And that, that's important for not just those communities, but all Dark County as a whole. And again, that really goes back to building those stronger communities. Yes. For sure, for sure, having that that uh, representation there. So again, Sheriff Mark Whitaker, he is on the ballot in the primary election. Uh, I encourage you. Uh, I, I've 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 covered the sheriff's department for many many years, and have always been impressed with. Uh, I almost said Chief Whitaker, <laughs> uh, Sheriff Whitaker. Uh, for so many years, it was yes. Chief Deputy Whitaker. But uh, I encourage you whether you're voting absentee or whether you're voting at the polling place, um, check his name, Sheriff Whitaker. Uh, he's a good man, has done a lot of great things for Dirt County. And I, I encourage you to, to mark that box for him because I, I truly believe that he will be doing more great things as he, he takes over and, and makes the sheriff's office his. I mean, you've been under, uh, Sheriff Spencer for, for so long, but now's the opportunity for you to take it and take it to the next level. And, and just talking to him and seeing what he's done so far, I believe that that's on the horizon. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. He's, he is accessible and he will answer your questions to the best of his ability. You're going to see him out and about here real soon, maybe uh, knocking on your door to, to talk to him. Uh, give you a chance to talk to him and, and ask him any questions you might have. Uh, but uh, if you do get that chance, don't run and hide. Uh, don't don't. If he rings your doorbell, make sure you open it because uh, you're going to find him very likable, very accessible, and he can answer your questions. And he's going to be forthright and honest with you. So. Uh, thank you for watching these videos. Uh, you can come back to them anytime if you missed anything. Uh, and uh, again, vote for Mark Whitaker for sheriff.